Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video I'm going to explain how linked lists work and how you can implement a linked list in Java. Every node in a linked list has two parts. It has a piece of data and a pointer to the next node. As you can see in this sample node, we use a piece of data that's just a simple integer, 17. Here's a sample linked list with three nodes. You can see that each node has a piece of data and a pointer to the next node except for the last node in the list, which doesn't have a next node. So it simply has a null value there. Every list also has a root node. The very first node in the list is called the root. So our linked list, we have to store a pointer to that root node. Some of the operations we need to use in linked list, we need to be able to get the size of a linked list at any given time. We need to be able to find a piece of data in the list, add data to the list, and remove data from the list. And I'll show you how each of these operations works. Let's say we want to add a 10 to our list here of three nodes. We're going to start by creating a new node. We put the 10 in the data space for that node. And then we're going to point our next pointer to the root node. Now our new root becomes the new node that we just created. Effectively, we inserted the 10 node at the very beginning of the list. Now let's say we want to remove a value. Let's remove 5 from this list. First, we need to find the 5. We always start by traversing the list starting from the root. So we look at the data in the first node. Is that 5? No. We go to the next node. Is the data in this node 5? Yes. So this is the node we want to remove. And we're going to remove this node simply by changing the next pointer in the previous node, the 10 node, to the node we're trying to remove next node, which is the 5's next. Now we've effectively removed the 5 node because it's no longer seen by the list. If we traverse the list, we'll skip right past this node, so we really don't know it exists. So that's how the remove operation works. So one big advantage of linked lists is that you can insert and remove items anywhere in the list without shifting elements, as you sometimes need to in arrays. So insert and remove are big O of 1, or constant time operations. Some of the disadvantages of linked lists, first they're not sortable like an array is. Then they're also not stored in contiguous block of memory like an array. So traversing a linked list sometimes is much slower than traversing an array. And lastly, there is no index for the items in the list. So you have to traverse a list to find an element, which makes find a big O of n operation. Whereas with an array, if you know the index, you can locate an item with big O of one time. Now let's look at how the Java code works. So first we have a node class, which I set up as a private inner class Every node has a next node and a piece of data, which is in this case an integer. I set up three different constructors. A no argument constructor, so we could just create a node. A one argument constructor, where we can pass in a value, but have a null next node. And a two item constructor, where we can pass in both a value and a next node. So I have three different constructors, and they're all pretty simple. And then I have setters and getter functions for the data and for the next node. Now let's look at the linked list class. It's a public class and all of its methods are public as well. Every linked list has a pointer to its root node and it also stores the size of the linked list as an integer. I have a simple constructor that initializes the root node and it initializes the size to zero. I have some test code here that I'll show you in a minute. We set up a set size and get size function, setter and getter for the size. These are very simple setting and getting an integer value passed in. The add function passes in a piece of data. And since we're going to accept duplicates in our list, we don't check through the list to see if the value is already in the list. We simply add a new node using that piece of data and the root node as the next pointer. And then we set the root to the new node. We increment the size of the list and we return the new node. That's pretty much it. So it's a pretty straightforward add operation. The find function, we create, first create a node called this node for the root. And then as we iterate through the list, we can use this node to iterate the list. While this node is not null, in other words, while we're not at the end of the list, if this node's data is the data that we're looking for, then return this node. So we're going to return the node itself, not the value in the node. Otherwise, we're going to advance our pointer to the next node. This node is equal to this node.getNextNode. And if we iterate through the entire list and we still didn't find our value, then we return null. So we'll either return the node that we found that has the value in it we're looking for, or null. 
So that's how find operation works. Now we have a remove function where we pass in a piece of data. We're looking for that piece of data and then we're going to remove that node. Now as you recall, every time we do a find operation we need the pointer to the previous node as well. So we're going to use node this node to find the node we're looking for. We also each time we're going to have a pointer to the previous node that we advance as well. So this node starts out as root and previous node starts out as null because there is no previous node to the root. Now we have a while loop similar to the find. While this node is not null, in other words while we're not at the end of the list, if this node's data is the data we're looking for, then we're going to set the previous node next node pointer to this node's next node pointer. In other words, we're going to delete this node from the list. And then we decrement the size of the list by one. And we return true because it's successfully deleted. And if that node, if this node is not the value we're looking for, then we advance the previous node pointer to this node, and we advance this node pointer to the next node. So in other words, we advance both those pointers by one through the list each time this check fails. And if we go through the entire list without finding the value we're looking for, we return false. So that is the remove operation. Now we have some test code up here that I'll show you how it works. We have a public static void main, which is a main function to test it with. We create a new linked list called LL. We print out get size, which when we start out with a new list, the size should be zero. And then we do ll.add8, so we add a value of 8. Now the size should be 1. When we print out the size here, we should have a size of 1. Now we add three more items to the list. So we add 17, 5, and 10. These are the same values that we had in the PowerPoint slides. And then we print out find17.getData. Now keep in mind, this find returns the node 17. So if we want to print out the value that's stored in that node, we have to do dot get data. So since 17 is in the list, it should print out 17. And then here we do a remove operation. We remove the 5 from the list. We print out the size. The size of the list was 4 up until now, so now the size should be 3. And then we do a print find 5, and we should get null because the 5 is now deleted from the list. So let's compile our code, and we'll run it. So the first time we get the size of the list is 0, the second time we get the size is 1. We do a check to find the 17 and we find it. After we deleted the 5 we see that the size of the list is 3 and then we do a find 5 and we can't find it so we get null. That's how our test code works. So that wraps up my video on Java implementation for linked lists. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please click the like and subscribe buttons. You can find the code for this video on my GitHub site here. I'm Joe James, thanks for watching.